Yeah. All right. So all you know of uh, the purpose of this call, right? The intersection, it would be uh, a kind of production use case uh, discussion session. So it would be for next uh, six to seven hours. Uh, every Saturday, we are trying to we'll try to uh, get on the call this kind of session and we'll discuss some of the real production uh, use cases that probably you will face. Uh, you know, uh, during the interview, maybe you will face this this kind of questions, or also uh, in your real productions environment, you will see uh, those kind of challenges, those kind of things, so that it would be easy for you to handle the situation and also for your uh, knowledge based perspective, right? So my first use case for you guys, right? So every use case, you will get five minutes to think. Okay, so what I strongly suggest that whatever the use case, I will uh, bring it up on the table. So you just think through, ask questions. Okay, so just let's read that I am, let's read that I am the customer. You you are all, uh, you know, AWS champion. Uh, somebody from you, maybe uh, architect or cloud engineer, or cloud consultant or DevOps guy. So that is how we can construct our entire, you know, this kind of discussions. That is the framework. And let's get started with our first uh, production use case. It will look like something like this. All right. So the first use case, let's send the customer. Okay. And I have got a very um, big OLAP server. Okay. Some, some kind of data warehouse technology. Okay, and the storage size I need uh, almost uh, 30 TB. Okay, so I need uh, some kind of cost effective uh, solution. And my query that will run, it is not very frequent, right? It would be some kind of very sporadic kind of query. Uh, it's not every single day a lot of, lot of query, maybe every single day a few of query, but the main problem. I have the 30 TB storage, right? So as a solutions architect or cloud consultant or DevOps engineer, what do you think, what would be, uh, how can you construct your solution to address this need? Over to you. If you don't understand, ask questions, don't just uh, be as a listener mode. Uh, it will not help uh, even for your long run, okay? So try to become interactive. Uh, so that, uh, as you said, that the customer is looking for a 30 TB of storage, but that uh, they don't have more IOPS. It is like uh, if frequently they are going to use it, right? That is what your concern. Absolutely. So you're right, uh, Vivek. So the 30 TB storage, but they are not using very frequently. But yes, their nature is some kind of uh, OLAP, uh, you know, some kind of data warehouse because they will use a lot of joining, you know, they will use select query. Okay. okay. Okay, so um, uh, going to this only for the storage perspective, I would suggest S3 uh, because if you go for EBS and EFS, there will be uh, the size when you're mm -hmm. carving it and when the data, it is slowly and slowly when it is growing it because mm -hmm. as you said, you required a directly 30 TV of storage. Okay, so right. 30 TV of storage, if you want it, you directly can go with the S3 because EFS and EBS are a most uh, chargeable because when your data going to put across, uh, the charges will be very high on that. Right. So I would go for the S3, S3 storage. Very good answer. At least very well, probably very, very close to the solutions. So storage part is good, but how can you do all of the query run and all stuff? Uh, when storage so, the, taken, so, yeah. uh, so the query run, uh, we can use it as a um, cloud formation uh, for any kind of a query or if uh, is, Automatic, if you wanted to run any query, then we can use cloud formation. Or if you wanted to have the manual, then you can use the uh, CLI or the uh, or the cloud shell or uh, the API. These last, three... Yeah, so no, last part, uh, it is wrong um, okay. because the, your storage part is absolutely right. But last options, last part that you have tried uh, is uh, absolutely wrong but absolutely fine. I mean, that's why you are here to understand this because it's right and wrong thing, okay? I really appreciate Vivek that you try it and you very well try it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry to disturb, can I answer this question? 
no problem jagdish yeah. go ahead yeah so i uh, i think we can attach to any uh, kinesis uh, data stream or data firehose and we can attach it to any analytics uh, engine to run the queries and like i'll agree with the uh, storage part which vivek said s3 we can use but uh, to run the queries uh, we can use any uh, query engine uh, in uh, which is there in the aws services okay so anybody would like to give it a try on that point only so the storage part and somebody said cli cloud formation uh, somebody yeah. said kinesis but what do you think um, is it the right answer i think the uh, storage part we can use a uh, s3 in frequent access is the good option for okay so i will answer this question somebody asked is it a fundamental course um, unfortunately this is not a fundamental course but you can stay there module uh, because uh, you'll get to know a lot uh, because um, you know that would be a good thing for you i mean fundamental is a cloud practitioner but i think you can stay there so the answer is um, as i said the customer wanted to have a kind of sporadic query and they explicitly mentioned uh, you know beginning so the whole combination of solutions something like athena and s3 so uh, probably in aws solutions architect uh, course wherever you have taken your courses from us or from some somewhere else mm -hmm. athena plays a super important role for aws solutions architect these days okay you don't need to become a subject matter expert for Athena. If you don't know, uh, select, if you don't know how to construct uh, a TCQL query, absolutely fine. But at least you should know what is Athena. So Athena is a kind of service from AWS that you can create uh, a kind of data set here. And I will show you quickly because uh, you can uh, do your home tasks. Maybe if you don't know Athena or you are first time you're hearing that, so this is something like you can query your data through Athena and you can create all of all sorts of select query, right? Let's say select um, star, it, it, it looks like the same thing that you are familiar with SQL, right? Select star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. So, and you know, you have to define the data set and your data set source can be S3 as well, okay? I don't have any now, but now what happened that if you can store your data set in S3 in Apache parquet format, Okay, whatever the format, and then you can actually link Athena to S3 and you can execute your query because it's not a frequent. If it's a frequent, then probably we can go, we could go for Redshift, okay, or something else. But since it's a not uh, frequent sporadic uh, query, and this combination would give you a very strong, uh, you know, solutions. Actually, I've done these solutions for one of my customers. Uh, where, uh, you know, this Athena and S3 and QuickSight combinations uh, perfectly went, went good because uh, they also wanted to have the dashboard out of that. That means select query, let's say out, the result will come up here as output. And then with this output, they wanted to have a kind of that dashboard. And you know, the QuickSight is one of the AWS services, which provides you a dashboard kind of integrations with you know, S3 as well. Understood? So these kind of questions people are expecting, you know, AWS course is fantastic, fine. You know, uh, you should know, you have, you must know AWS solutions are fitted course, right? But this production use case would give you more insights about how the industry is, you know, uh, looking for, right? Um, so this first use case, any questions? Okay, second use case. Um, second use case from migration. Okay, oh, what I can do that I can uh, go for random order. Let's say in analytics, if I click analytics, um, if I see some of the, okay, there's a, another use case. Let's say I'm from a police department, okay? And you all know that all of the smart city uh, in the police department, a uh, lot of, you know, to protect citizens, right? Uh, in, in interest of citizen, um, all of the smart city, what they have done that they have placed their CCTV camera, right? Mm -hmm. uh, across the cities, okay? And they wanted to have a kind of quick, you know, um, 
uh, you know real time analytics uh, for that like who has done what maybe uh, your car crossed some of the num you know uh, speed limit you know right if you yeah. drive along with the you know mark like you were then sometimes you get the sms notifications that your speed is 50 to 60 or 75 right? how things happen right uh, so let me just just uh, help me to understand if i'm the customer how can you construct the solutions and the configurations like the cctv camera your um, customer will already uh, put in place but from there how can you construct your solutions to analytics think you have time these are all real use cases right this happens uh, uh, so can i use uh, green grass green grass interesting um green grass is good for iot um iot sensors um but green grass won't be a cost effective solution for that but uh, this is a problem is a real time streaming uh, you know customer needed a real time streaming also green grass we ex will explore but uh, i can i cannot say it's wrong answer but anything um, you know better solutions you are thinking for i would say kinesis very close very close so from kinesis to so i need to enter solutions flow uh, i mean okay. just try to help me out so kinesis is one part of the services so let's some custom i don't understand aws as you okay i need a solution you guys are the solutions architect or devops engineer or devops consultant you meet me and propose and convince me that these solutions will work so as i said kinesis kinesis which will help you to have the uh, live streaming data in a real time so mm -hmm. on a real time basis we can use kinesis to have it and uh, capture the um, uh, data uh, so yes. uh, I, I would say kinesis and, uh, and 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 that's what i i got okay. into mind very well very well yeah so Navunita, you, I see you unmute yourself. Would you like to answer this question? First, to capture the data, we have to use Kinesis host. Hmm. Then? Then. So I have a question. Uh, let's say I'm from the technical department of customer. How my camera will understand what is Kinesis? What is AWS? My camera doesn't understand what is Kinesis. What the things you will do that my camera will understand, right? So what is AWS? So first uh, we have to connect this uh, CCTV camera to the some uh, uh, to the uh, AC2 instance uh, where they can uh, keep the all the datas with the help of Kinesis. So you you required a, a AC2 instance plus uh, for storage you required the um either s3 you can use it to storing a data and and kinesis for the real time uh, capturing the data and streaming it so i think this s3 yeah. is the right answer again kinesis um, is the uh, right yeah yeah more oh, more okay more. Um, uh, so we can uh, use the um, disk types as well right um, and, uh, we can use um, uh, either, either um, io io or io2 black express uh, disk types for, for better I, 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 I hopes. Uh, no, it's very expensive for your use. You try it well, but this IO one, uh, you are talking about the EBS, uh, different e types e of, e right? Yeah, EBS, yeah, will, yeah. EBS will not fly because see, you know, CCTV camera produces a lot of, lot of, lot data. of data. So TV, I, I, and if you put TV data in IO, then your cost would be just skyrocketing. So okay, I cannot take this. Yeah. I mean, sometimes what happened that the solutions plus cost optimizations would be a perfect um, solution, right? So, uh, okay. I will show can you I, something. Can I, can I, yeah. can I try, yeah. can I try once? Everybody try once, twice, thrice. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I use uh, Raspberry Pi and then data transfer to the S3? After that, we can analyze the data through analysis, and after that, we can use uh, the simple notification service for uh, 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 the 
notif make, uh, making a notification for the particular uh, user hmm interesting 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 so i'll show you now it is already there in documentations kinesis aws kinesis Okay, so AWS Kinesis, you all know there are different types like video stream, data stream, data firehose, and data analytics. Correct. So if I go to video stream, you will see exactly we are talking about like that. So let's say I have got the camera, the stream media camera, then it will go to definitely Kinesis video stream for injections, you know, store and encrypt. Then you can actually integrate with different as you said rightly like let's say only video streaming uh you know it would it would not suffice for a real-time uh, analysis right so you need to integrate with some of the real-time processing software like custom media processing okay maybe hls media playback something like you know you know, uh, you know if you can replace the cctv camera with some of the live match happening uh, maybe somewhere let's say uh, you know cricket match or football match right something you know you can integrate with this fashion like real-time batch driven machine learning or mis forget about machine learning or some kind of processing so in between that uh, yes uh, you can store the data if you don't need the real time then what you happen that from Kinesis video stream you can put the data in s3 and then from s3 you can further integrate with some of the redshift or some some of your own third party tool in market, you can do a research. Uh, there are a lot of um, software, you know, in a company, they actually, you know, provide this kind of solutions. And the solutions is uh, one of the solutions. I work uh, very recently with one of my fellow solutions architect based on UP. Okay, I'll go. Egg What is an S3? So my do last what is the S3? Okay, so S3, um, the object storage module. So I think you can, if you, you have not taken any class on AWS, maybe in the cloud practitioner AWS, go and check for this S3. So now one of the company name, Videonetics. Okay, it is very good uh, for, um, you know, processing. Uh, it's a kind of video management software company based out, based out in, in Kolkata, Newtown. It's very good company. I'm just giving you some of the example, like they, have this kind of software so basically they use aws at backend so uh, they use kinesis and all stuff but they have their own uh, you know uh, kind of analytics uh, software company a uh, software you know applications but anyways if i'll come back to uh, aws sometime what happened uh, you know guys uh, aws they need to rely with some third party uh, application or third party isb as well right it's sometimes what happens that it may be in AWS, all of the services are not available to address customer need, but major portion of that uh, definitely you can achieve by, uh, let's say, uh, AWS services, but maybe you can have, uh, you know, some, some of the marketplace product, third party product about that. But anyways, that is that was about the second use cases that we spoke about. Kinesis, S3, these are the uh, Redshift, uh, these are the great combinations for this kind of solution. Greengrass is very interesting answer, Bashu. Um, I will check. Uh, but uh, this is something ready-made solutions that we have already worked on. But if we can think that Greengrass is also then we are good candidate for this kind of solutions. We have never tried for that. Maybe at least me. Thank you, sir. Hmm. All right. So third um, use cases. Okay. So it will learn uh, still till six thirty today. Okay, uh, six thirty p.m. So we'll have a five minutes break, maybe in five forty-five, and then we'll start again. So next use case from. Let me check. Okay, another use case from analytics. So probably you uh, think that okay, we have never um, learned so many things in analytics, right? But the, unfortunately, what happened that in market uh, industry, um, they are also working on analytics with AWS, right? Uh, so you should uh, at least should have some of the idea knowledges around AWS analytics services. At least those are very common these days. 
um, very recently one of my customer uh, they need some kind of options some kind of solutions so they have got their own dms2 document management system right and uh, now in the document management system uh, they have developed on their own so that means the document management system they have developed by their own uh, let's say java program but now um, they need some of the search capabilities uh, in that particular document management system so that you know anybody can search some of the keywords from their application then it would give you a kind of search uh, output uh, in the applications so if those kind of uh, requirement will come to you okay how do you construct the solutions or maybe what are the main services you can you know you, maybe you, you can explore for this solution uh, see in, in the front of what analytics tools you have opened it i would say in the application perspective they can go for the cloud search op cloud search op uh, option Okay. If they wanted to have the uh, anything database they, in, inside the data they want to fetch anything, they can use a cloud search option for that. But okay. I'm not I'm not sure about more no on problem. that. No problem. Not, sure. not problem. No problem at all. I mean, you tried that's excellent. So I think Vivek, uh, Vashu, uh, you know, they are very even sometimes, you know, uh, Murugan, Navanita, but others are uh, totally silent. I can see. Prem, Sadia, Shah, Sudandra, I know Sudandra. Um, so come on, guys. If you if you know something, then please feel free to uh, you know participate in this uh, because it's not it's an interactive discussions. Maybe I will learn something from you as well. Okay. So uh, anybody else for these production use cases? Solution. So I repeat the questions. So let's say I have, a, so I have, so I'm a customer, I have developed my own document management system using Java program. And I need some of the search capabilities in my application so that if my customer would like to search something, it would come up, you know, faster. Or uh, this is, let's say some of the municipality corporations uh, requirement. Okay, they have put a lot of building images okay and i want to search uh, the building let's say some of the uh, building addresses let's say uh, 112 by 1 okay xyz road and uh, and some you know automatically those images will come and with all of the details details uh, it, it would be very important for the municipality or use uh, very useful for your municipality corporation to see the uh, you know particular building information from tax perspective or for different reasons so that is their use cases, but from a solutions perspective, what are the important things you can see? So the AWS services that you can construct for this solutions. Okay. One Nobody, more, I think. Yes. I think one more we can tell if it is a serverless deployment, hmm. then we can go with the op Amazon Open Source services as well. Spot on, sir. Spot on. Yes, the open search is the main service that you can think for. Unfortunately, open search serverless, I think it's uh, not available on Mumbai. I need to double check once again that it is available or not. But yes, uh, open search service is um, uh, is a one one of the main component for that. Definitely, you need to have DynamoDB uh, to store uh, you know uh, to store your metadata and s3 for your images so that you know if i call something a query basically search then basically it would go and fetch the metadata and corresponding reference file uh, from s3 so i'll not get into that deep dive there will be a lot of development and devops related functionality that you have to do but the three four important service you need to think for a dynamo db open search and s3 for the entire solutions okay and definitely the java sdk and also that's that's something from the development okay. right. so now you understand guys you know what sort of technology you know industry has moved it is not something that people will ask a complex questions nobody interested 
to ask some what is EC2, what is RDS, what is S3. This Jamana Gaya, right? So this this protein it's long gone. So people will ask some of the real use cases. And um, this kind of questions will have a lot of lot of discussions, maybe next three, four days more. And um, I think that if you understand the pattern of this question, then you can go and go back, go back at your home, you do research that okay, uh, you know, and, and learn more in this pattern and uh, okay and uh, getting get deep dive into each and every uh, you know aws services that you uh, you have been taught all right so next questions not from analytics uh, it's boring i think uh, so go to application integrations all right so recently uh, i have got uh, another customer requirement where customer it's, it's a little tough uh, but I know that you have asked SNS related concern, but yeah. no, none of them has been answered yet. So I also thinking about that, but I don't have the answer for that. Correctly. Okay, no problem. I I I still uh, don't answer these questions. Uh, I'll wait till uh, tomorrow. Uh, okay, and uh, I'll uh, try. People will uh, you know I try to encourage people to think and answer if they can. Okay, but let's let's ask some another uh, queries then from this application integrations. So let's say one of the customers, the very enterprise level customer, and they approached me and uh, they were looking for some kind of solutions like, so they are using a Quartz scheduler. So Quartz scheduler is a very open source, popular scheduler service people used to do for on-premises. This kind of schedule, scheduling your job, et cetera. So customer using uh, Quartz scheduler used by EC2 instances and uh, that, uh, uh, you know, and then they are using EC2 for doing their batch processing job, right? Um, but customer was not pleased about Quartz scheduler and their cost is super high because they needed a lot of, uh, you know, compute intensive um, uh, EC2 instances to run job, okay? So they needed uh, they need needed to replace the entire solution with serverless maybe using AWS services, uh, and then that's why they approached me. I took one or two days time because I also wanted to do a research and found a good solution, and they are implemented. Now, with that, you should answer you know and try at least you know how can you replace that existing ecosystem with AWS serverless approach to address their need. <clears throat> tough yeah it's at 300 550 level or 400 maybe or 300 something it's a little bit complicated but uh if can you can you just uh Repeat? if you wanted to go with the with uh -huh. a, a serverless uh, architecture uh -huh. be like a little bit tough because you're completely migrating from the Yes. from servers to instance to the server. Very, very nice very nice i mean yeah i mean it is, it is a lot of work i mean you you simply cannot go from server to server less right it is a lot Correct. of lot of job but they have to do because that's their pain problem problem statement right because the cost is just high their managers are shouting at them like why so many you know so much cost in at aws aws might be very cost economic solutions and stuff but um, they had to do their application department team, development team, they had to sit together and implement anyways. But that's a separate story. Okay, nobody? Any idea mm -hmm. that you, something coming into your mind, maybe, maybe yeah, anything you think that, okay, it can be, it cannot be? I will, I'm uh, looking at this screen, I'm thinking about Amazon AppFlow. No. That's uh, what I can, can think. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, yeah, Bashu. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, can I uh, go with the Lambda with SNS and SQS? Very close. Very close. Very good answer. But the, the Lambda problem is it cannot run more than 15 minutes. If you create okay. uh, any functions, uh, they are, you cannot run any job or query or function more than 15 minutes. And that is the roadblock of the Lambda. You are very, I mean, very close initially from AWS also. Uh, I mean, we, um, 
we try to uh, go to the same, same directions, but uh, it cannot be done because uh, their uh, job would run more, more than one hour as well, sometimes. So Lambda cannot help. Okay. okay. No, so so what about Prem, uh, Sadia, Shah, uh, Nabunita, Jitesh, Chandan? I also want to see your progress because uh, you have taken courses from us, right? All the known, known name. But I need you to be participate participate here in this discussion because for next six to seven hours, definitely I will be your instructor and mentor, whatever you can call. And I need my students to be interactive with me uh, for this kind of discussions, being honest with you. All right, so um, I will answer. The answer is the coach uh, scheduler can be replaced by Amazon Event Bridge. So Event Bridge, if you go to Event Bridge, you will see there's a, you can, you can create a kind of scheduler, right? So if, if you go there, you can do a schedule and you can do all, the, all of the cron jobs, et cetera. So, uh, so this, uh, you know, Event Bridge, no doubt that can be replaced your, uh, this one. Lambda. Lambda. Uh, no, this quad scheduler they no. have. Okay, but the but yeah, sometimes lambda also because lambda, but no, lambda is for the functions for the you know the scheduling on the particular time it will invoke, right? Oh, yeah. So then the next thing is AWS batch. Okay, AWS batch with forget. Okay, so AWS batch with forget is a serverless option. You know, you can create job queues, you can create job. Okay, you can run job, right? And this is um, the whole purpose of AWS Batch got invented, right? If you go to AWS Batch, I know that whatever the service IP can choose, uh, it is something you don't, you maybe you didn't touch, maybe, uh, maybe you didn't discuss much. Yeah, because most most of the services, uh, this, what you said right now, the Amazon app is uh, that one, I'm not sure about, we didn't see that. So that's what new services we are seeing it right now. Uh, so the news that's something right you know always go um, step ahead right i mean this all of the services are okay but this time you know aws batch these are the you know very getting very popular okay and they are very useful so you need to learn at least 100 level 200 level on your own okay because for aws solutions architecture entire course it's not possible to touch all of the services right? it's, it's not possible even if you ask me i don't know many of the services even from AWS, right? It's, it's absolutely okay with it. So here you can see that you can create job, you can create job queues, and you can actually integrate AWS batch with AWS, you know, Fargate. Fargate is a serverless, um, you know, container service, right? So you can, uh, so that your, your entire job queues can run in the um, Fargate uh, mode. You can see there's an option called Fargate, and you have to define your Fargate capacity and blah, next, next, next finish. So the answer is, uh, even breach AWS batch with Fargate can be a good um, candidate for the, uh, you know, this kind of requirement. A customer, uh, you know, invented already. I mean, sorry, implemented already uh, for this. Okay. Next question. Oh. Okay. Analytic application implications. So SES, I will not answer because SES something that I will wait till tomorrow. Okay, uh, I think it's okay. Blockchain, it's not part of this business application. Let me choose if I can have anything. It is very straightforward. Work mail, work docs, Amazon Chime. Ah, everybody's favorite compute. Let me think what could be the questions. Okay. Uh, so one of the customer, they wanted to migrate their 2012 Windows operating system along with 2012 uh, SQL databases on EC2. Okay, these are migrations. So they are okay for lift and shift. I mean, rehost migrations, right? Uh, but 2012 
operating system AMI is not available on AWS EC2 as on today. Why? Because 2012 is end of life because Microsoft has declared that uh, 2012 will be end of life maybe uh, October 2023 or it's uh, anything. But it is that's why it is not uh, there. But customer they need for this kind of migrations. Okay, 2012 to AWS, right? So, what do you think? What do you think? What would be the solutions for that? Because it will not run because if you cannot find any uh, AMI uh, for this 2012, but they need to run. They can bring their own operating system to this. Hmm. But how? On, because on, on EC2, EC2 you cannot have uh, to have their own. Oh, yeah, correct. Got right? You have to choose. Name. Correct, correct. Uh, EC2 image builder? EC2 image builder, it is something different, Vasu. It is not something hmm. because anyway, it is a kind of template, right? Uh, but it is okay. not a kind of replacement of your because you need to have operating system, right? Do they need the um, operating system or do they need, can't they put the SQL on database on database onto the RDS? Hmm, interesting. I will take this answer. Little different thought process, uh, but okay. Any, anybody else? So what Sadia is saying? She's saying that instead of 2012 on typical <coughs> EC2 mode, can't they have this SQL on Amazon RDS? Okay. Maybe Amazon RDS is the managed services, the right? managed database services. So they only, they need to only focus on their databases, not the typical operating system, maybe. Um, okay, this is an interesting answer, but any, any, any other answers? Beanstalk, they can use it for deploying perspective. What is that? Beanstalk? Uh, Beanstalk, they can use it for deploying perspective. What I am thinking. Okay, Amitabho Dev, he also tried interesting, but Docker image, but Docker image, uh, the entire operating system, if you run on Docker image, then your Docker container file is huge. Uh, and it is also non compliant because what happened that if Microsoft will stop supporting uh, 2012, then if, if something goes wrong, you cannot have any support from Microsoft either, right? Uh, because Microsoft um, operating system is not uh, Amazon product, it is a uh, Microsoft product. If your OEM stopped providing this, uh, then. <laughs> Yeah. So answer is, uh, everybody tried at least, good. So the answer is um, probably customer, they don't like that. So they have to upgrade their operating system and databases on, you know, first at their on-premise, maybe 2019 or 2022. Then you can put it on uh, AWS with the latest um, version. Let's say it's a kind of... Okay, getting a background noise, whoever is not speaking, can you please go mute? So what I'm saying that if this this kind of problem will come to you for sure, mm -hmm. these are Correct. called these are called legacy problem. Okay, these are called a legacy applications issue because this operating system has now become legacy, old, outdated, right? Your 2012 database has got legacies, old, outdated, right? And if you would like to leverage AWS uh, or if you would like to uh, explore AWS, then you have no choice. That first you need to upgrade, ask customer, hey, customer, unfortunately, this uh, operating system is not available here in AWS because that, that is the reason. So better you have to upgrade first and then migrate to AWS, okay? Then you get benefited, right? Okay. So that's the answer. And it can happen for any applications, maybe Oracle, okay, maybe, uh, you know, let's say IBM AIX machines, right? So AWS doesn't sub, uh, support IBM AIX machine, right? AWS doesn't sub, support HP or some kind of, so maybe IBM mainframe, 
AWS doesn't support, right? All you need to do that you need to, uh, you know, first do a modernization, do a little application modernization, then you can go and port to AWS. And I will take Sadia's answer as well. Uh, I mean, it's possible that, you know, uh, it is not always, um, you know, it is not always like they have to have used 2012 or XYZ um, databases because their main intention to run their databases, right? Uh, okay, probably they can uh, use Amazon RDS and get the managed services features and functions and their database will perfectly fine on maybe 2019, uh, you know, uh, 19 version on RDS, okay? So you can also uh, make your customer understand that you can go to manage services offering, okay? Your database can go to this one that uh, RD, Amazon RDS and your uh, application front end can go to EC2 maybe uh, after this uh, you know, version of right now. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Okay, good. Let's take three minutes break and we'll come back after three to four minutes, okay? And we'll continue till 6.30. Thank you. Sure.
All right, I'm back. Okay. I think okay, Anup just joined. Okay, uh, so next production use case uh, from migrations once again, because migration is super important for you guys, right? And you really want to build your competency around migrations, okay? And go through different, uh, you know, maybe different uh, YouTube videos, sometimes helpful, uh, you know, different, ask, your, ask different questions to your instructor, to me, because migration is something that's really, really critical for you. So the next production use case, my, you know, from migration is, let's say I have got 10 machines, 10 virtual machines running on VMware, okay? And out of 10 machines, uh, two machines are related to my development and QA, okay? And all of these uh, virtual machines that I have, it is based on, uh, uh, based on um, CentOS, okay? Or let's say Ubuntu and uh, MySQL databases, right? So now if you are the cloud consultant or architect or engineer, then how can you start these migrations uh, from their on-premise to AWS without minimal downtime? That's very standard basic questions. You understand my questions correctly. Maybe you are you have joined or you still need break or somebody has not come from maybe break or bio break. So I will repeat my questions once again. So I have got I'm a customer and I have got 10, 12 machines, maybe virtual machines running on VMware on premise, latest version ESD, uh, yeah, VMware latest, uh, you know. And all of the out of these 10, 12 machines, virtual machines, I, I have one for development, one for UAT and test. Okay. And all of the uh, applications are running uh, on Ubuntu and MySQL database combinations. So, how can you start these migrations without minimum downtime? Amitabo. I think uh, he answered. I, I know that Ashmita may be his daughter name. So Amitabo answered, uh, we, we should start with non prot and then prot. Absolutely spot on. Excellent. But I need more specific you know, answer. This is definitely you have to go through non prot and up then prot. This is really a right answer. But let's talk more about technically, technical, uh, technical uh, you know, solutions. Uh, uh, so we uh, primarily we need to establish the connections between on-prem to cloud, and to cloud. Uh, yeah, we have, we have to take care of the security. What, what kind of connections, uh, Murugan? You rightly pointed out, but more specific is uh, <clears throat> in this, it will be your host team, your uh, networking team, both has to join together for the setup. Then only they can have the connectivity. So first, your uh, network team has to have the connectivity from your uh, own prem, prem to the uh, AWS. And you uh, mean uh, VPC? Uh, you have to let me, uh, yeah, yeah. So let me make your answer very easy. Okay. Uh, so let's say my database sites, mm -hmm. uh, all of the database sites together, it is two TV, including my DFQA plus productions. Okay. Sub mm -hmm. two TV here, right? Mm -hmm. So now uh, try to answer, you're right, that networking team and you will do, but specific answer I need, what sort of network uh, connections you need to build between your on-prem and AWS? It's very straightforward answer. Uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, through IBM, uh, sorry, uh, AWS Data Connect. Data Connect. Data Connect, uh, there's a no Data Connect service. Um, uh, the name is I not like correct. Maybe uh, AWS VPN gateway or maybe AWS, sorry, AWS Direct Connect. Absolutely. AWS Direct Connect. Direct Connect, yeah. So AWS Direct Connect or IPsec VPN, okay? That would be your first connectivity based on your uh, data size. I think it's a 2TP. 
it's still IT said VPN will work because these days uh, every company they have a very good uh, internet speed, maybe 20 Mbps these days is nothing, right? Uh, more than that. So for 2 TV migration, uh, uh, you know, your normal list line connectivity uh, through IP set, you know, IP set VPN that can okay. But more than that, probably you can go to the direct time. So, okay, this networking part is fine. I, I will take it. What next? How can you migrate this? You need to build up the EC2 instances layer for uh, replicating the, the hardware or maybe application structure on top okay. of it, like the database or any other connectivity you need to be built on in the cloud. Uh -huh. As, as you have a connectivity between on-prem and uh, let's say the, the first environment we create in the cloud, hmm. assume it's going to be test bed, means like anything from on-prem test to uh, cloud test have the connectivity on application level. Right. So that we can try to simulate some uh, testing traffic so that like once all the testing is completed from all perspective, uh, for making readiness to a production, then, then probably we can move yes. the traffic slowly. I take it. Take it. Yeah, and then uh, EC2 we missed, right? So we have to create uh, uh, the the Ubuntu uh, uh, OS plus SQL supported uh, uh, maybe uh, AMI. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, what happens? Um, so there are a couple of services, but you know you can take help. So definitely direct connect is okay, but if you want to migrate your application, uh, yes, uh, you should start with production and non-productions, but you can take help from AWS native services like, you know, app migration services. So if you go to migration tab, you know, quickly, if you go to this migration and transfer, well, probably you can see there's a, you know, application migration service, application discovery service, right? These are very, very important guys, okay? So these services would help you for the migrations. I have maybe uh, certain videos on that. Uh, I recorded for different sessions. So this tool will help you for this kind of migrations. Okay, that would be for your front end or middleware maybe. Okay, services. But what about your database? Because database is always critical, right? Without database, you cannot your your migration won't work, right? So the application is okay because application is not dynamic, right? If you are from developers, first, you know, background, let's say, or develop, if you have any idea in the development, what happened that application is not that dynamic. It is a static uh, because all of your sessions, everything will get actually stored in databases, maybe, you know, somewhere else. But every single day, your application file will not get changed unless and until you have any new releases, okay, or new build, understand? So the Sorry. first, yeah. So the first thing that you need to start with the database, not applications. Okay. So your main focus, how you can migrate your databases without minimal downtime. Okay. So always remember the database would be the first choice and then applications along with or later, because if your database it will be inconsistent, then um, you know after migration you you lose all of the you know latest data right that would be a huge problem for your company you understand right all your all your mature guy I think all you have worked for some company that you know so this is very important so for database what do you think what are the solutions so have to go for? Uh, okay, the service is fine. So uh, we have to create a replication once the complete uh, mm. uh, database replication is completed, then we have to do the cutover. Right. So how can we do that? More specific, let's let's deep dive 300 now. Okay. The database replication, I will take it. I love it. Your answer. How? Let's say for our case is a MySQL. How can I do that? I'm not asking because I'm the database specialist for my company. I'm asking because these are very, uh, you know, very basic questions you have to face, right? Uh, during the interview or maybe in a real situation. That's why I'm asking. How can I do this replication? Okay. Let me show you. Let me share my draw.io. Okay. Uh, can I, okay. can, uh, can yeah. I? Uh, yes. Uh, I have to replicate uh, this. 
on prem to our cloud uh, instances and uh-huh. uh, initially our uh, on prem will be master and cloud uh, instance will be a slave mode mm-hmm. and once replication entire replication complete then we can mm-hmm. cut off and uh, uh, ap- tell application team to deploy their applications mm-hmm. on devs as a dev and uh, after that is if it is okay then we uh, production will dev as a after that we can migrate al- like same way uh, productions and at the sorry uh, qa and uh, production okay okay not bad thanks uh, basu so okay let me um, let me show you the in this pictorial presentations at least i can try so let's say on my left is on prem on my right is aws right and you have rightly said that you have already established let's say ipsec vpn or direct connect that's needed so let's say uh, dev- just one answer i just wanted to give uh-huh. uh, for database migration can be use uh, uh, aws dms yes service. yes yes of course so thanks for this answer we get so uh, there are two things that you can use aws dms okay these are database migration service that has the capability of the you know continuous data changes uh, replications um, and also uh, it would have a kind of you know uh, full copy and incremental copy uh, something like that or everything i mean using dms you can do that homogeneous and heterogeneous migration as well uh, but um, there are two ways that you can go ahead with the dms or if you go ahead with the aw uh, database native way for this replication let's say you don't have dms you have mysql right so what you yeah. can do that you can take a first backup okay from the mysql they call it mysql dump file okay uh, first you need to take a dump file okay and then copy this backup file to aws s3 okay i'll not get into rds or aurora i'll, I'll still stick to uh, ec2 uh, right now ec2 approach so once you uh, have this your backup file backup database copy on aws and from there from this backup you can restore a database here in aws right that means the data right now you have the same data right now you have but you know database is continuously changing right so yeah. every time the database change every second so then that is something called a incremental changes right so once you will restore your entire database out of this latest backup now it's no longer latest because in between you have got so many changes right so then you can create a replications which is called a mysql bin log replication if you use mysql uh, for uh, postgresql is a where um, where file they are own replication file uh, and for msql they have log log file log ship so whatever the database you need to choose um, you know the replication process so for mysql you can go for mysql bin log replication methodology so that what happened that now all of the incremental changes now sync here so now you have got a latest copy and as bashu tried to explain that you need to define a cutover time let's say sunday night that you have decided that that would be a cutover because that point uh, no such workload for any company right sunday maybe 3 am or you know maybe 2 am okay as for company to company decision then you can turn off sorry you can turn off this replications between this and now this database has the same data of that and that's how you can migrate your dev qa productions anything okay so that your database is now in sync and in between you can have the copy of application server using application migration service or simply you know uh, maybe export and import options or that so there are a lot of options there and now on monday morning your application is live with minimal downtime because you have all of the data makes sense yep. 
Make sense? Yes. So, yeah. yeah, this is yes, important sir. because if you don't know this, then I will not hire you. <laughs> so you understand, right? Because um, this is needed for these days, and everybody should know whoever taking AWS Azure. I have the same respect to Azure and GCP OCI. All are great, but this is a basic things you should know how the migration will work. How can you avoid the downtime? How can you use AWS or non AWS services, right? Cool. So the next use case. Okay. So I'll uh, have a lot of use cases repo that I have you know, created. And um, I can see some something right now. Just let me raise the customers in OCQL. Okay, it's again no SQL databases. I'm not getting a right one for you guys now. Just hold on. Okay. Let me ask you these questions. If I go to compute once again, what is the benefit that why should I go to Elastic Bin stock? It is a very straightforward question. Maybe customer asks you the same question. So maybe customer asks you, okay, you know. Uh, elastic bench stock, we can use it for the, uh, like in your environment, where if you have to run any code, you have to create database, everything you have to create it from the scratch. But here you can do it without servers, serverless architecture. You can have it, your code running directly through this elastic bench stock. Okay. Yeah, right. Another good thing about elastic bench stock is it has a good, capability of swapping your URLs for you know blue and green deployment okay so if you don't know this do a little research on that elastic beanstalk will provide you a good blue and green deployment uh, option so that you can you know quickly swap your URLs for the blue and green it is saying my internet is unstable can you hear me now yeah yeah we can hear you. okay so i said that elastic beanstalk is option called blue and green uh, then you can also just go and check. Okay. Sure. Okay. Container service. I love that. Okay. There's a recent customer. So their implementation is still going on actually. So their workload is running on Azure. Okay. And they are using uh, Azure different services. Okay. For their uh, mobile applications. So recently, uh, they have got interest in AWS and they uh, discussed with me and they tried to go for microservices environment, okay? There's the context of this uh, customer discussions uh, last two, last two, last two. Now, the problem is their developer, uh, you know, is getting a problem, right? You know, whenever they will push their Docker image in Elastic Container Registry, ECR, hmm. Then, um, because all of their um, all of their all of their applications are inside their private subnet, okay, and they cannot pull that images from Elastic Container Registry because they private subnet they don't have any public uh, internet, okay. I mean, it doesn't have any internet connectivity. But Elastic Container Registry is something like a public repo that you can push your Docker images over there, but you can you can you have to. Uh, pull those Docker images from your EC2 instances running in private subnet from the ECR. It is a tough question, um, but try to answer because recently I um, published in our WhatsApp group, somebody answered or I actually answer. Uh, it's kind of refresh your memory that what would be the solutions for that. And from the DevOps perspective, if you have some, if you, uh, from DevOps background also you can try. You understand the question? Uh, no, no, I think we need one more time. Sure, sure. So um, 
my question was let it uh, be simple uh, i can show you uh, one thing uh, I, I can show you uh, architecture diagram okay just hold on can you see my screen uh, whatever i'm doing no right no 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 thank you because it's um, now i have tried to open one of the pdf file sorry 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 my bad yeah so now uh, okay this is the architecture oh. yeah, yeah yeah this is the architecture go through the architecture and try to understand first this architecture talks about what so i am here i ask this question that uh, from the git from git they have pushed their code to ecr elastic control registry but all of the ecs clusters are running in the private subnet okay so how can you pull the ecr images in the private subnet answer is in front of you actually Uh, through VPC. Okay. VPC uh, open VPC. Yeah, open. go ahead. Whoever wanted to have. Okay. Uh, actually, not. I am from Deva background. No problem. Uh, just I, I just uh, while while try. Uh, can we uh, implement the ECR push talk? ECR. ECR push talk. Sorry, push task. ECR push task. Um, is your push task? No, is your push task? Uh, push task is something. Uh, I mean, you have to do push task, but you need a connectivity between the private subnet and ECR, right? Uh, because ECR in the public subnet. Do you have any reference for that? I mean, uh, whatever you said. Uh, can you please uh, share the link or supporting documents here in the chat? That also to learn that what exactly you are uh, talking about. Maybe I don't know. But that would be great help. But for that, for this case, something else we tried and it worked. So there's it. I just wanted to try. I'm not sure about this mm -hmm. one. Yeah, but yeah. through the NAT gateway, can we uh, give the internet access, get an internet access from the private subnet? We can use NAT gateway. This is the Even answer. I'm, I'm to thinking the same. This is the answer. This is 100. That is the answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So from the NAT gateway, so you need the NAT gateway or you need a VPC endpoint, either of the services for that because VPC endpoint is another service you know that to communicate the private subnet uh, between, uh, you know, you can establish a VPC sub in endpoint so that you can establish a connectivity between your private subnet and other AWS services like S3, CR, Dynamo, DB. Okay, uh, internally communications, it can be done. But yes, um, uh, the partner that I worked with, they actually implemented NAT gateway and uh, it happened, it, it works. So answer is NAT gateway. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. And in the same line, the same customer asks so many questions. I will not spend or uh, waste your time for that. The customer is very good. I mean, they are very uh, strong uh, technical knowledge. They are asked something like related to DynamoDB, right? And DynamoDB, I, I should, I must, must say, people, that you need to do some research study, you know, on DynamoDB as well, okay? And this is very, very important, one of the important services, right? So they are asking that, is DynamoDB is multi-AZ enabled so that if any of the ECS goes down in different AZ, still uh, it can it run on the DynamoDB, I mean, does DynamoDB provide a single endpoint uh, across multi AZ from the high availability perspective? Okay, let it be a little simple. So, my question is 
if i launch dynamo db is it by default multi az enabled uh no you have to choose that option you have single you have single database or you have multiple so during that configuration you have to choose that if you want or uh, kind of a backup kind of a setup or uh, you can say as a redundant while okay. con configuring no 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 i think let me check if i go to dynamo db in front of that i have created a dynamo db right now create table right let's mm -hmm. say song table partition yeah, let's say table name is um, uh, test or you know something like that song dot keys album right and go to customize settings dynamo is standard is something for uh, general purpose recommended okay mm -hmm. Uh, this is for uh, the general purpose data recommended for the majority of tables that store frequently accessed data. It is for old data. Mm -hmm. I have choice for on demand and provision. I can go for on demand or provision for that if I if you want if you if you need a access pattern or usage pattern before, but if you are not sure, then you can go for the on demand. Then you can create local indexes and global indexes. So local index and global indexes different LSI and GSI that will call. And here you can do an encrypted at uh, rest, then digital protection, and then bam, create table. So here, once this table has been created, then I can further get into this uh, DynamoDB you know, table. Just bear with me. Now it's created. If I go to test, and here, if I go to indexes, monitor global global tables is something different right it would be for dr purpose for different region backup is for backup export additional settings so that means um if i go for dynamo db by default it is multi as okay. okay. if it is a serverless offering that's what mm -hmm. okay okay, okay. Super. okay. Super. Okay. Ah. Okay, it. No, no. So basically, you're saying that this is like um global service which we can access from any AZ inside the region. That's right. In, in, inside the region, okay. Inside the specific region. That's correct. Six sixteen. Okay, we have fifteen minutes more, and then. Uh, we can wrap it up probably. Uh, that is one another use case that we could discuss with you. Then let me check. Today's productions. Okay, another was this. Is it good, guys? I mean, I need a feedback. Uh, do you think it's boring? Do you think it's helpful, or how is it? I mean, I need to also improve ourselves, right? Every single day. So do it's too much. It's it's highly highly. I would say that okay. we need these sessions need this session. because yeah. because because we are learner, and uh, hmm. if we are going outside and if the questions will be like this, I think um, we would not be able to understand first and to come into any kind of a conclusion. It will take some time. So at least if we do these kinds of practices, at least we know where to use what kind of services. Then it will be easy for us to understand and to give the answers. Absolutely. So why why I'm not actually I'm thinking. See, um, what the main problem in industry right now, uh, with due respect to everybody, that you know everybody learns talks about AWS or Azure, but the main gap is something like this, right? So, correct. Correct. Uh, I mean, if I, I'm just trying to, or we are just trying to fill the gap because uh, this is very much needed. Because if you don't know these things, because probably once you will fail so many interviews, then probably you will think that you, are, you have wasted your time and money. But this is not right case, right? Your AWS, the basic knowledge, course, whatever you have taken, it is absolutely necessary. Without that, you don't understand further, right? But these kind of use cases, uh, these kind of discussions are very much needed so that you will aware that you rightly mentioned that what sort of questions you might face during the interview or maybe in real situation, right? That is the whole effort uh, here. All right, so uh, let me try another one. Okay, uh, another use case, customer is using Cassandra as their NoSQL database on-premise. Now they want to migrate over AWS quick as possible. 
they also interested for dynamo db okay as time is less what are the options you should propose customer needs ha and scalable database solutions this is not part of your syllabus but it's out of syllabus but again try to answer you know, listen the questions again customer is using cassandra as their no sql database on premise now they want to migrate over aws as quick as possible they are also interested for dynamo db as time is very less what are the options you should propose so that customer also need or also achieve high availability and scalable database solutions tricky questions but it is also uh, some kind of uh, real situations thing DynamoDB, anyway, we will use when the, where the database is not in a structure, it is unstructured. Right? Very so, rightly, you are going right way. Think more. Uh, I can give you another two to three minutes. Um, there is options in that where you can have WU, RU, these options, can we use it in? Uh, no, RCU, WCU is, uh, is some kind of read and uh, write capacity. Correct, correct, correct. This is nothing related to uh, they are this thing squared. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody. Okay. Uh, so see, there is a catch there in these questions, right? Mm -hmm. So the catch is they are using Cassandra, which is definitely either no SQL. DynamoDB is also a no SQL, right? Correct. But the main problem is you as quick as possible okay mm -hmm. so that if you want to do a quick as quick as possible then if you would like to go for one database to another database a whole lot of things uh, they are, your developer they have to do right because cassandra is different database structures dynamo database structures at least from the technology perspective okay the framework perspective we don't have any much time so what you need to do that you can quickly go Cassandra, okay, to Amazon, you know, uh, Amazon, Cassandra, there's a service called um, uh, this one, uh, key spaces, right? Amazon's key spaces. Once uh, the migration is done, then probably you can go ahead and modify your database and tune further to port it dynamically further, right? So don't migrate from day one. So what you have done, you have quickly migrated whatever you have on premise, right? And then from there, you have to do a little modernization and then you have to further go for the DynamoDB. So, so the right answer is not DynamoDB. DynamoDB might be a very good candidate for this workload, but not easily. It is not, it cannot be done as quick as possible. So first you need to go to the key spaces, which is Amazon, AWS, uh, you know, compatible uh, Cassandra service. And then from there, you can further go for DynamoDB in future. Understand this little tricky, little different question, but sometimes these kind of questions will come because customer, they don't know what is AWS, what is, you know, Cassandra, key spaces, DynamoDB. They just simply say, okay, I need to explore DynamoDB because I heard Dynamo is very good. Then it's your job to guide your customer, right? Um, only saying yes, it's possible, then ultimately you cannot do that. It's a whole lot of problem uh, because the time is a problem, right? With that, uh, I can conclude today's sessions. I think a lot of things to absorb, consume, guys. So the next day, uh, probably next Saturday, the same time with a lot of other production use cases. Um, and there's an Amazon sorry, RDS Bootcamp part two, day two is still pending. I don't have much correct, time. Correct. For that. So a lot of things I'm doing or we are doing rather, but uh, next day, same time, we'll have uh, another session for production study for the AWS solutions architect uh, associate, uh, you know, syllabus. And, then... and um, uh, they be, uh, they be should, we didn't get the uh, first recording session of that RDS. Actually, I was a part of it, but uh, I, was, I was having a session with the customer in the evening time, so I have to drop out. 
no problem so i, I just uh, if you can share as the recording no i think will... abina already shared let's say their name is amazon rds bootcamp day 1 so from team let's say in whatsapp uh, you know whatsapp group abina already shared just try to find it out okay yes uh, here shared amazon rds bootcamp day 1 so we have uploaded to youtube directly oh, okay, okay 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 Uh, okay, and getting a lot of uh, huge responses. There is a two thousand views and all that. So I thought that it would be great help. You know, the same link can be shared with you as well. Correct, correct, correct. Because because uh, in uh, the first day, I think that uh, whatever you are explaining it, that the basic we have understand. Whatever till mm-hmm. I have was on session, I got into it. But uh, once I have dropped out, I am not sure. the others what all the session uh, you have described it i was not sure about no that. problem so, yeah. the last the part important. yeah last part is very important that i uh, we we discuss a lot for on the parameter group because in rds Correct. parameter groups plays a significant role so at least try to go for last 45 minutes for the parameter group sessions uh, 40 to 45 minutes maybe then sure, you will sure. get a lot of because uh, the next sessions for the rds boot camp i i'll try to bring it up a lo- lots of other points like aurora you know all of the real use cases uh, all stuff sure. and uh, but uh, i don't have much time these days but you know next day the same time saturday i will have another session on the productions use case and then uh, rds boot camp later thank you for uh, so much for joining guys and thank all yeah. the best thank you thank you thank you so much for this five time and Arranging this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.